And uh, for the next couple of minutes, I can tell you, you will receive instruction. You will receive prophetic declaration. And you will receive prophetic word from the Lord. Therefore, I'd like your spirit to be open and your heart connected. Because God is going to speak to you and is going to confirm his words with signs following. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. And therefore, I'd like you to connect with God in the spirit. And say, Lord, something must happen to me today. Something must happen to me today. We are really privileged of the Lord. I can tell you that because... When I met Prophet uh, Manton, I went ahead and looked at some of the great work that God has used him to do in Africa. It, it has been so massive. It has been so massive. And I really count it a privilege when they say I'm in town. I need to be a blessing. And, um, you know, we met at um, um, Dr. Mike Modoc's protege meeting. And they are all uh, proteges of Dr. Mike Modoc. And I can tell you that God is using them mightily. And uh, it's really a privilege, and I count it an honor that he will look at us as big as we are. And he said he wants to be a great blessing because he commands mighty crusades. He runs very massive meetings. So please, let's make it bigger and better to Jesus. As we receive Prophet Dr. Thomas Mountain Fall as a big blessing. Come and celebrate grace and God. Celebrate grace and God. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Can we lift our hands to the Lord? Father, thank you for your powerful wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. wisdom. Just wave a hand to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Get these fingers up. If you have two hands, if I'm in Africa, I say two hands. <laughs> so I have two hands. Do you have two hands or two hands? Which is it, American or... Uh, hands, hands, or oh, hands. I have two hands, Lord. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, I have two hands. I have two hands. Now I want you to do something. Put up six fingers. Five on one and one on the other. Maybe the thumb or the... So, there's six W's that I like. Mm. Okay, one, I call... Uh, I call this the master plan for knowing the will of God and being in the will of God... All right, the master W is, is wisdom. Someone say wisdom. wisdom. That's on one hand, okay? You could do that on the right hand. And the other five are what, when, where, who, and why. Can you say that? What? 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 Wait, wait, sit. Let's do that again. What? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I've been to Nigeria. I had a great time with those people. I'm telling you, beautiful people. Thousands of people came to the conferences. Thousands of people blessed. God had me prophesy over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, one after the other. It was like it was like it was like there was no tomorrow. This was the last day on earth. It was that powerful. I mean, Amen. amen. So say what? what? When? when? Where? Where? Who? And why? why? You can write that down later. Just remain standing. Now lift those hands up again and say, Lord, show me all of these things. Show me all of these things. So I can be in the plan of action that you have. So I can be in the plan of action that you have. All right. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turn and give your neighbor a high five billion. High five. Slap him real good and slap him on the two hands, two hands. And you may be seated in the presence of Jehovah. Look at these babies here. They're so cute. I love the babies. Bless the babies, Lord. God said, be fruitful and multiply. And in Nigeria, you really took them on the promise. You said, yes, Lord. People said, yes, Lord, I'll do that. Be fruitful and multiply. The Bible says, blessed is the man whose quiver is full, right? And the woman, too. Children are a blessing from the Lord. The family structure is important. God said in Genesis uh, 2.18, it's not good for man to be alone, right? Some people think they're called to be single. Anybody single here? You're all married probably. I know you like to have marriages. African weddings everywhere. Anybody single? Nobody single. Anybody single? Oh, God, I thought I was on another planet. 
There's two two ladies here. Any men single? God said, I, God spoke prophetically and said, the gift of singlehood, I have not given it to you. So other things happen, but I didn't give it to you because God said it's not good for man to be alone. You're so organized. I like your socks, Pastor. They're very international, and the, your shoes, oh my God, they're shining up this way. I'm getting the glare of glory. And you have a clock for me with the tick down timeline. I love this church. So I'm going to praise the Lord for this church. Can we bless the God? Amen. Well, what I'm going to teach on, what the Lord spoke to me to teach on, is really going to bless you. Are you ready? Yes, sir. This is just my introduction. So say that again. Wisdom. Wisdom. What? what? When? when? Where? Where? Who? Who? And why? why? Now you need to know what do you need to be doing. Someone say, I need to know what I need to be doing. I need to know what God wants me to be doing. And then you need to know when to do it. Then you need to know where to do it. Then you need to know with who. And you, of course, you need to know why. But I think why is an easy one because if you're really serving the Lord and you really want to please him and advance his kingdom if you're saved, or, or if you just have a good business idea or whatever, you know why you want to do it. You want to be successful? Come on. Hello. You want to be successful? You want to progress in life? You also want to please the master, yes? So why is kind of an easy one. But where and, and even when, because a lot of people say, when do you want to do it? You say, I want it now. Right? Are you hearing me? I want it now. Someone say amen. amen. I need some amens. I, hey, come on. Don't be in America like you're, you've lost the touch. In, in Nigeria, people say amen so many times, and they say sir so many times. I thought, I wish I had $1,000 for every time someone called me sir. <laughs> amen, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. It's okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Right, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm like, Jesus, am I sir? Is that my name? <laughs> One of my names. I said, if I had $1,000 for every time someone called me sir, I'd say, boy, I'd I'd have a few extra zeros in my accounts, all right? Amen. So say amen. amen. Say amen, sir. Amen, sir. 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 Amen, sir. Amen. Hallelujah, sir. That's another one. Hallelujah, sir. Amen. Praise God, sir. I know it. <laughs> amen. Thank you for that one. Say that one again. Right on. Right on. Right on. Sir. Uh-oh, baby eruption. Bless the babies, Lord. So the will of God is also geographical. There's a, there's a where to it. You could be the right person. I heard the Lord speak to me this morning, and he told me to say this. He said it very, very loud and clear. He said, you, tell the people this. He said, you can be the right person in the wrong place and be messed up. Sometimes even the wrong person in the right place can get blessed because there's a transmutation and transference of favor that's in that climate and atmosphere. Hello? And they kind of stumble into something even by accident. But you could be a good person, even full of God, full of gifting and talent and, and gifting and talent and anointing and all that, but you're in the wrong place. If you're in the wrong place, you can't function well there, and you'll be frustrated, and God will even be frustrated about it. So you need to be, and then, and then we, let's move on quickly. Then who? I want to cover a lot, so I'm, I'm not going to take t too much time on each one. Then who? Someone say who? who? The owls, they say who, 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 right? You know those birds, the owls. You need to be with the right people. Hello, lift your hands. Say, Lord, I need to be with the right people. Say, Father, cancel every wrong relationship, every wrong environment, every wrong atmosphere, every wrong connection, and get me into the, the company of people that I need to run with that can help me. I can help them, but I definitely need the people that can help me. There's something about certain people that unlocks the greatness in you. 
something about wrong people that unlocks the bad part of you. You know, in the nature of a man, every man, there's a king and a fool. And whatever button you push is the one that comes out. Whatever spirit feeds the atmosphere can lead to carnality or spirituality. Nothingness and even stagnation and stagnancy or advancement and success. I don't even want to use the word blessing there because blessing, people think, well, it's just something that God gives me that I'm just going to get anyway. No success comes by having a definite plan of action and you working on the plan of action and you have measurable results that you achieve and then things begin to progress on. That's what we can call success. That's a little mini definition, one definition of success. There are many definitions of success. And, and I'm, a, I'm a teacher of success. I mean, I have an anointing to teach in this area. God has t touched me to be a teacher of the body of Christ to teach on the laws of success. And I love it. Do you love success? You can't have anything great that you don't fall in love with. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I love it. I love it. I love it. Tell God. Something else about God, I'll throw this in. Listen to this one. And you can say amen or ouch. You can say oh yes or oh me, oh no. Hmm? God lets you work with his principles, and if you don't, he will leave you where you are. That's painful. I don't know if that hits, hurts you, but it hurts me. Ouch, hey, man. ouch, ouch, ouch. In Kenya, they call the couch the coach. You know the thing that you sit on the sofa? They call it the coach. So that the coach, what, where's the bus? What is it, a bus or is it a truck? The coach, I'm like, it took me a minute to get it, you know. God will leave you to figure out that he's made you a king and a priest unto him. Revelation 1.6 says we are kings and priests unto the most high. All of us. Someone say, I am. That I am. A king and a priest. If you're a woman, go ahead, just say you're a queen and a priestess. It's okay. No problem. Some women get in a fit about it if you call them prophet or prophetess. Whatever. S just means it's female. S at the end. E-S-S. -S. It's okay. No, don't get hung up on it. I'm prophet so-and-so. Don't call me prophetess. Whatever, man. Woman, do your own seminar. It's okay. What is this about titles anyway? My name is Thomas, spelled T-H-O-M-A-S. I'm fine with that. And it's in the Bible. In John chapter 20, Jesus saith unto Thomas... I'm there. And I'm the believing kind like Abraham, not the doubting one. But I do like to see things. Maybe that's part of the Thomas name. You know, I do like to see and touch and feel and know, you know. Hmm? So the Lord spoke also and said that, he said this. He said, I want you to stop petitioning me so much. And I want you to come up and sit with me. And I want you to begin to declare, hello? I want you to begin to declare what I am saying, what I want you to have. Just pray in the spirit for a minute. Thank you, Lord. For the victory, for you've already caused us to triumph, and you've said that. But it's up to us whether we're going to win or not. You see some people, some people are not very far along in what you'd call the game of life, and other people are extremely successful. You know why? Because some people choose to take action on everything that they dream and see, and other people don't. And guess what? God still loves them all. He even loves the worst sinner. He even loves, I don't know how, it's a mystery to us, we don't love them. The person that does the most evil things. How many have ever had anything evil done to you? I mean, really, really, really bad. Is it just me? I have my hand up. How about you? Is it, is it only me? Do I really love those people? Maybe with the love of God. 
but I don't feel good about them. In fact, I had thought many times what I'd do to them if I wasn't saved, you know, if I, if I could have some impunity on the deal. I thought about it. In fact, I enjoyed thinking about it. But I had to remember the scripture that says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. So you forgive them and just move on. That's a big thing right there. You have to forgive everybody. You just have to. You don't have a choice. You have to ask God for the grace. So you have to do it by faith. Forgive them and release them, no matter how bad it is of what they've done. But God still somehow has love for the human race, for the people that he allowed to be born on the earth, no matter how evil they are. But you got to understand that God can love some people and leave them how they are, but he likes some people more than he loves everybody. How many want God to like you? The favor factor. The favor thing where God says, I really like you. I really like how you, how you are with me. You know, the Lord spoke through a, a prophetic, uh, a real major prophet the other day and said to me, said, I hear the Lord saying, God said, I'm thrilled with your, my son with your love and devotion to me. I thought, wow, that's powerful. You know what? God can speak that over you. There's nothing he won't do for you. Lift your hands. Favor is the birthplace of prosperity. Favor is where it all starts. Favor depends who likes you, who wants to show you honor, who wants to bless you and celebrate you. What door will open? What thing will happen for you? It comes by favor. God could breathe his favor on people to honor you, and he'll leave. He could pass someone else by and come to favor you because God is looking for you to show you favor, and that's where it all starts. That's where it all gets birth. That's where it all happens. And the Lord is very tired of seeing people just stuck. But you have to make the decision. So I'm writing another book called the, uh, about decisions, okay? And I'm writing another book about focus, and I'm doing a lot of that. But today I want to speak to you a few points about, did I leave anything out? Where, what, who? Yeah, I said who, I said where, I said when, and I said what. I, I said it all. And why? Why? You got to know. You just have to know why you want to do something. I don't think that's a big, a big issue. But lift your hands one more time. And say, Lord, what you want me to do, when you want me to do it, with who and where, that has to be sorted out now. That I can progress forward. And then God's favor begins to come because you're, you're in alignment with everything the way he's ordained it. God blessed Elijah in a place. One place, Kirith, the brook dried up, but the, brook Zara, the, the river Zarephath, it flowed with water. And he's the one that prophesied that there would be a drought. Amazing, right? So he was thirsty in one place, but (laughs) wet in the other place. Different places. He said, go to the place called there. I've called the sustenance for you, the, the supply for you, the provision for you to be made for you there. So it wasn't at a certain place. It was at another place. So we have to get this geography thing right. Remember the Bible says also in Genesis 2, he made the gold and he made the resin, which is the oil. There's oil under Texas, right? And he made the gold and said it was good. And he said, I made it there and it's good. And the river Pison and the other river Euphrates and all that. And and they were in a certain place. And he made the, the birthplace, the cradle of civilization was there in that place. And he caused all life to flow out of there. And then he decided to walk in Israel and that part of the world and walk amongst her. And even Jesus walked in through that place. They didn't have planes then or boats or ships where he could go around the world. Jesus didn't go to Australia to see the koala bears. He didn't go there. I've gone there. I've held the koala bears. He didn't go to Kenya to... Dance with the elephants running at you. I did it. I have a video on that. I did a safari, and we took a video. I made my own wildlife, like Nat Nat Geo. I made my own Nat Geo show, you know. Amen. With the uh, zebras and 
giraffes walking around and all the other animals. So many animals, I don't want to take time. And this big bull elephant came running at me, and I had to say, hey, boy, calm down. And he went like this. I said, shalom, baby. He just went. He was charging at our car. These are the big bull elephants that kill people. The tusks were like that long, all the way from here, past the edge of this platform, all the way up like that. And he got within 20 feet of us, and the drive, I cut that out of the video, but the driver, somebody screamed in the car. The guys, the locals, they screamed, go, 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 because the elephant was coming. And I, said, and I had total peace. And I just said, stop, and he stopped. I, uh, which, which, you know, I'm saying this because we, we need to understand we have power to speak to things. Someone say, I have power to speak to things. This alligator, about a 12-foot-long alligator, <laughs> stopped in the middle of the road in front of my car and laid down like he wanted to go to sleep. He got disoriented, I think, because he was lost because he what came out of his environment. He got onto the road, and I had just flown in from a whirlwind of the move of God, and I thought... Tornadoes were happening over there in the Midwest after our conference. The weather patterns kicked up. I mean, it was really that prophetically strong. I don't know if you can understand all that, but we'll, we'll get into more of that later, some of those kind of things. How many like to learn about how the glory works, how it causes changes and shifts in regions and nations and cities? Oh, my God. It does. And uh, then I get back, and this alligator came. So I spoke... I said, hey, boy, you can't lay down on the road. Now get up, get up, and go back to your place over there. I spoke to him just like that. And you know what he did? He went like this and turned his head, looked at me to see who's talking. And it wasn't my voice. It was the authority of God and the instruction in my voice telling the creation what to do. And he got up on his feet. You know, they have those big, funny claws, you know, and fat hands. And he stood up. And he started to walk and got to the side of the road. And thank God some official vehicles came to, like, block the road a little bit because they heard about it, to, to let him take time to walk slow. He doesn't get run over on the road. It just went right back into his place. Everything has a place, and God loves order. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to talk to you. The Lord spoke to me about for a few moments from my book, and my books are on the table out there. You can get this. In fact, I'd love to sign a copy for you if you'd like. Called The Benefits of Excellence. The Benefits of Excellence. Father, thank you for the spirit of excellence, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge and understanding, like you already have had me speaking about here, about direction and about things that need to be uh, set in place in life that people can get on with things. Number one, there's some things we need to avoid. And this confirms what I was just saying by the Holy Ghost. You know, I wrote this book myself by the Spirit of God, and I've just been teaching by the Spirit of God, and I didn't realize that this is confirming what I just said. This is amazing. Are you ready for this? It's here. I didn't know it was here. I forgot. You know, I'd written this, and then you forget about it, you know? Here are five bad choices that cause you to linger on in endless cycles of suffering and struggling. How many believe it's God's will for you to suffer? How many believe it's God's will for you to struggle? I'm not putting my hand up. How many believe it's not the will of God for any of those things? But the quicker you get ahead is the quicker you apply his principles and laws to your own life. I have one friend in London, England, great man of God, who uh, he, uh, he's made 15,000 declarations that he speaks all the time. And he put it into three books, 5,000 each. And he speaks these things. And then you wonder... Then you wonder why he's so far along in life. He's a multimillionaire. He has a successful international ministry. He's in business. He's doing all kinds of things. But he's always speaking. He's always declaring. So know this, first off, that it's not God's will for you to suffer a struggle. Now, five things. Number one, misplaced environments. You're in the wrong environment. 
Being in the wrong place. Number two, wrong relationships. Being with the wrong people. Wrong engagements. Number three, doing the wrong things. Number four, lack of divine updating. Having a lack of current revelation of what God wants you to do now and in and through your life. Divine updating. You need to get updates. You need to get updates. You need to get upgrades. You need to go back to the boss and ask him for another instruction. Let him talk to you and tell you what he wants you to be doing now. Just because you embarked upon something doesn't mean that you have to do it just that way all your life. Hello. Number five, disobedience to God's command. That's obvious. Misconnections, disconnections between you and heaven's agenda for your life will always cause you to miss God's best. Thus, you continue, continuously lose and suffer unnecessarily. It's not the will of God for there to be a long process before the, the promise and the manifestation. It's been said that manifestation happens when expectation meets action. When expectation gets coupled together with action, someone say action. Someone say expectation. The, way, the reason God blesses you is because you expect him to. Hello. The reason why God gives you an answer to a prayer or a solution to a problem is because you expect him to. Let me give you the Bible for that. Mark eleven twenty four. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. And otherwise they'll be granted to you, done unto you, given to you, done for you. When you believe, you receive. So pray and expect God. Say, I've received it. I'm not petitioning anymore. I'm thanking you for it. There's three realms. There's the petition of prayer. There's the receiving of it. And then there's thanking him for the answer. And then there's the fourth one, which I said with this declaration. You have power to declare. And the Lord is saying, I want you to come up and sit with me and begin to speak to things. And stop crying to me about what you want. Hello? Right. I want you to declare the answer. And watch it manifest. The difference between people is vast. One gets, another one doesn't. Why? Lack of expectation. Why? Lack of diligence. Why? Lack of action. Can you say amen? You're getting quiet. Learn something. That's okay. Be quiet and learn. Write down things. That's good. I like that. Yeah, I see the wheels turning in people. You hear me wherever you are. You got to get, I mean, these are the keys. People say, Lord, send me someone that can help me. Well, he sent me right now to you with the answer. Here it is. Start to do these things. I guarantee you within, within seconds, minutes, and hours, even some days, you'll begin to get new results. You have to shift your thing. When you want something you never had, you have to do something you've never done. When you want to be uh, unforgotten, you have to do something unforgettable. When you want to be remembered, you have to do something memorable. When you want God's favor, you have to please him somehow. And there's also a thing we call the attitude of gratitude. You have to be thanking him for it. Some of us don't get it too quick with that one. We don't thank God enough. God loves a cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful praiser. He loves a cheerful prayer. He loves a cheerful worker. Someone that can stay full of joy. And there's a key like what, if, if Satan can rob you of your joy and your emotional well-being, he could really mess your life up. So no matter what's going on, you got to keep praising God anyway. Come on, somebody. You have to keep jumping. You have to keep praising. You have to keep shouting. I like, amen, Pastor. I love it. Hallelujah. 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 Do it your way. Hallelujah. I love that. <laughs> Yay, Boshata. There's an old song called Don't Wait Till the Battle's Over, Shout Now. 
You know that it ain't over yet. Da, da, da. Don't wait till the battle's over. Shout now. Because you have the victory already. God has designed for you purpose, <laughs> power, provision, precision, productivity. Yeah. Wow. All right. 40, 40 action keys on the benefits of excellence. You can get the book. I'm only going to give you a few. Number one, first impressions. Now, this, this was spoken prophetically. I also have the video. I have to dig it up and re-release it because uh, uh, we sold out of that copy, you know, sometime back. We'll, but we'll, we'll reproduce it again. You can get the. So when I got on the platform in a meeting, the Lord spoke to me what to speak about. And it just began to flow. And that was all typed. And then I took the key points and, and did it like this and made it into a book that everybody could read. I've given this to many leaders, and they've said, this has changed my life. There's a woman that uh, was living in a village somewhere, and she got my book on the laws of success. I'm sold out of that one. We're going to reprint that one, too. Good problem, but it's a, pro <laughs> but it's a problem. But we'll have more, we'll have more in, the, in the coming days. And she said, I read the book, and I couldn't sleep after that. She said, I just, decided, I just saw that God didn't want me to live in the village where I was. So she decided to find a way to go to the big, the big town, the big city, and get a big house there and a property. And she did, and that's where she is now. Someone say, praise the Lord. She said, she said I got to get out of here. You know? Lift your hands, close your eyes, and say, I got to get out of here. Now, where's your here? I don't know. Somewhere you are in right now. You have to start to envision and imagine a better place and say, I got to get out of here. Speak that prophetically to yourself. Say, I got to get out of here. I know what that means to me. What does it mean to you? Number two, the importance of excellence. Seek out and appropriately apply the spirit of excellence and its principles into every area of your life. And then you'll begin to experience elevation. God does not want you to stay at the level you're at. You're tired of it. He's also tired of it. But unless you rise up to begin to do something about it, it's going to stay the same. Proper scriptural and doctrinal foundations. That's another one. We know that. We're supposed to know that. Here's another one. Tithes and seeds. Seeds into certain anointings cause a, a, a prophetic activation for a harvest to begin to come to you that wasn't coming before. You're creating something with your seed. Sowing for an expected result. When you sow, especially into an anointing, you got to watch the soil now. You want to sow into a certain grace and to a certain anointing to receive back. And God can take little you and make a big you. Medium you, then big you. You can go up in stages and levels by sowing. I go out of my way to sow into great anointings. And I've reaped. I mean, God's made me, God's made me a wealthy man. I am blessed. I don't know if you know that, but I don't want to really testify too much. We wouldn't get out of here today if I, if I started to talk about a few things that God's given me and done for me. We wouldn't have time to contain it in the day. So you need to sow. Now, number one, you need to be a tither. If you have your pastor, you need to tithe there. You need to do that. Because God says, I'll open the windows of heaven. But he talked about the storehouse. So the storehouse is really the ministry. It's really the place where God is and where he's moving from, the priesthood, right? And also the storehouse, a place of power and purpose where things are happening. Now, that, when, I, when I get out of that, it challenges me and provokes me to build a better organization because that's the storehouse. The storehouse is a place 
It's a function. It's a meaningful organization. Hello. So whatever you're doing in business or in ministry or in church, you want to package the whole thing and put it together. Not, I don't like the word package. It seems like, like you're putting something on the outside to make it look shiny. You know what I mean? It's a cheap word. I, it's not even the right word, but that's what people call it. You can relate to that, but it's much deeper than that. It used to be like a functioning organism, a living thing. It has a life of its own. Like the ministry has its own level of expression. I like you guys here. You have everything nice. The color's great. The design is great. The graphics are great. You got it all going on. Let, wave your hand and say, thank you, Lord. And say, and say thank you to your pastor who's put all that together. And the people that have done that. It's wonderful. Because people look at things. The Bible says God looks on the heart, but man looks on the outer appearance, right? He looks on the outer appearance. Men do. I was praying some years ago, and the Lord spoke to me. I said, Lord, you know people's heart. You know, I was praying for some people, and they were having some issues. And, and the Lord said, but I said in my word, son, said it loud. I was like, whoo, whoa. I said that men look on the outer appearance. Thus, you have to make provision for that. You have to make room for that. I'm talking about the benefits of excellence here. Are you getting this? We need to have excellence. If you want to increase in your life, you need to have everything in excellence. I'm prophesying here to you right now. Can someone lift your hands? Lift your hands and receive this from, from heaven. Excellence, excellence, excellence. Excellence. Get the word in your vocabulary. Say, Lord, I want to be excellent. In the book, I took all the scriptures I found in the Bible that has the word excellence in it, or excellency, or excellent. Excellence, excellent, and excellency. All the, the scriptures that I found with those words, and they're in this book. You need to read these. I've done the research for you. All right? And there's a special there. I'd love to sign a copy for you. We'll talk about that at the end. Another one. Dil uh, excellence is diligence in your purpose. Speaks for itself. I have a long paragraph. Let me move on. Another one is God's prosperity. How do you get it? You got to work with God's biblical economic systems and with his kingdom laws and principles, and then you'll truly prosper. But in faith, with expectation, in action and diligence, into anointing. I'm, I know I'm saying a lot here, but I'll get this typed and I'll make it into points and send it back to you. You can read it as a book, all right? Excellence. In all things, creates increase. Number seven, associations. Correct or incorrect associations with either, will either will either increase you or decrease you, depending on what they are. Wow, the Lord spoke to me some time ago and said, uh, you need to run with winners and run away from losers. You like that one? I had a religious pastor in Europe didn't like me saying that. He said, what about the homeless people that we feed? I thought, you knucklehead. <laughs> I'm not talking to them about them. I'm speaking to business people here in the house of God. I'm speaking prophetically to entrepreneurs, people that want to rise up in business. That other message has its place for that setting. I'm in a different setting right now. He didn't understand any of that. Thought it was brash, you know. Who's this, you know, who's this American to talk like that? I'm a blessed American. <laughs> I'm gonna, besides that, I'm not just an American. I'm a global citizen in the 21st century church. The whole world is mine. God sent me around the world to all six continents. My feet here with my blessed new Italian shoes, suede shoes. I, I have been on all six. In fact, I like them so much I bought two pairs. I said, I'm going to wear these, so I want to have two. He said, they look good. Thank you very much. So, uh, and these suits are my own clothing line, custom tailor-made, you know. I have about 50 suits like this. All different colors, fabrics, materials. I have them designed, very comfortable. The way I like T.D. Jake's kind of pants. <laughs> See how wide them pants are? Get that. Come on, huh? Don't move the camera, just so maybe you can get it. Like See that? Uh, you know why I do it like that? I have my tailor do it like that because I don't want my knees to get stuck. You know, I'm not a skinny jeans kind of preacher, you know. 
sitting on a bar stool on the pulpit with a soya latte with skinny jeans with bobcat marks on them, like a cat jumped on them and cut the front, you know? You know those kind of jeans? I, I, don't, I don't really enjoy wearing things like that. And I don't think I'm a T-shirt guy. I like T-shirts. We make T-shirts, but I don't really wear them, you know what I mean? I like, anyway, I like to dress elegantly. Even my casual clothes are designer, you know, Nike, Gucci, whatever, you know what I mean, nice stuff. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Present yourself well. How many believe in for a beautiful car, a nice one? Not Toyota Corolla. Huh? Lift your hands. Father, I prophesy that outside in this parking lot in the coming days, there will be a flood of new vehicles that people will begin to get new things. And people in the area will go, what's happening at that church? Look at those cars. Look at those people. And they'll say, I got to get in on this. Pastor, the Lord says that anointing for prosperity is coming so strongly upon you for greater wealth, reception, and create the creation, and also uh, ideas in business and for business people. And the Lord says, son, you're going to begin to uh, create a, uh, an institute for, for uh, business people and have a business uh, thing community, and the Lord says, I'm going to begin to raise entrepreneurs under you, and God says, don't always get be frustrated with looking at everybody, thinking everybody has to connect with you, uh, because God has a certain people that are like, have the DNA that you can lay hands and impart to them, to many people, but also, and raise them up, but I see people that have a certain thing about them that are just connect with you, because what I've put in you, I also want to grow in them. And God said, those are the people you're going to run with, and that's the company you're going to run with. You're going to create them. You're going to move in, in, in new circles. And the Lord says, son, I'm opening new doors, higher levels of things. And people, great men are going to begin to uh, receive you and look at you and see difference about you and begin to, uh, I, I tell you, anybody that's watching, you might as well take this word. And everybody that's here, you might as well take this too. They're going to begin to receive you. It's just going to be my favor, says the Lord. I see the day coming also when the name of your ministry will also be like branched out. There'll be a main tree that has the roots deep and then there's branches from the tree. From the mother tree. There'll be branches in many cities, many places. I even see one in New York. I even see one in Houston. I even see ones in Nigeria. I also see them in other places. And God says, I'm going to begin to raise this thing up. The Lord said he's also going to give you favor in the state of Florida. Something good's going to happen for you in Florida. And I see some sons and daughters being raised there. And that's going to turn into a work also. The Lord said he's elevating your stature into the uh, realm of being a patriarch and a father. And God says you've been a man of prayer for years and years and years. And many of the prayers, it's like the prayers didn't reach past the ceiling. They didn't get answered yet. But the Lord said, I've held them all like in the vial. And now I'm going to open the top and I'm going to begin to pour the oil. And I'm going to begin to answer by fire. Because God says this next season, the next two years, the next two years, 2020 to 2021 from 2019 are going to be a year of expansion and a major flourishing in the realm of organization. And God said he's going to also give you wisdom from mentors that have built networks of churches and the information is already there, says the Lord. 
And God says, I'm going to give you entrance into great, great, big uh, organizations that have many churches, great apostles, that even from your own country, that have, have built great things. And you're going to learn how to do the system and put it together. But God says, I want a special anointing and a special grace to flow through you that's unlike other people. And I see God tailor making messages for you to speak. They're going to like come to you in the night, come to you in the morning and through the day. New revelations, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge and understanding. Wisdom and revelation and knowledge and understanding. It's going to flood your mind and your spirit. And you're going to begin to be a greater orator with great excellence and eloquence. You're going to begin to speak. And God's going to begin to use you to bring forth uh, tremendous, tremendous messages to the body of Christ. And I hear the Lord saying, I hear the cries of many people calling you Papa. And I see many people calling your wife Mama. And I see this realm of honor that's just going to be so phenomenal. The Lord says, don't look back, look ahead. Remember what I said through my great prophet Isaiah in 4318, when he said, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Verse 19, for I'm doing a new thing. Shall it not spring forth? Yes, it will. And he said, I'm even going to make water and rivers to run even in the dry place. And the Lord says, you felt like for the last five, six years, at times you just things are very dry. You get a little bit of a, a flow of water, and then it seems dry, and it's back and forth, back and forth. And sometimes it's just been very hard. But the Lord says, don't look back now, son. I consider it as a thing that's behind you. And I want to say that to everybody. What, uh, things that have happened are like things that are behind us. We're not, we can't go forward while we're looking back. You can't drive fast forward looking through the windscreen while you're looking in the little review mirror looking back. You can't do both. You got to move forward. You got to choose. Am I going to replay the past or am I going to preplay the future? And the Lord says, any opposition, anybody that was competitive with you, jealous with you, people that have betrayed you, sons and daughters that were with you and now they're not, the Lord says all of their complaints and, and little nitpicking and attitudes, the Lord says I consider it as noise. It's offensive to me. I don't like it and I don't like them doing it and I don't consider it valid and I don't consider it of any good purpose or any use. So I consider it rubbish and I don't want you to even bother with it. The Lord says let your mind and your imagination begin to agree with how I feel about that. And you don't have to give it any thought anymore. It's the devil that wants to keep playing this video over your head to make you think of things before, before. Regrets, could have done, should have done. Why didn't I? Oh, me, why? Why did that happen? Well, how did I allow that? How did I trust the wrong person? And all loss is, comes from trusting the wrong person, the wrong people. How did I do that? How did that happen? The Lord says, so what? Can you go back and fix it now? It happened already. So just flush it out, flush it away, and move forward. God said, this is a discipline that we need to do, that you need to do, I need to do, we all need to do it. Stop replaying the past. It's worthless. Whatever happened, it happened. I learned from it. I'm better now. I'm moving forward to the next season. I feel the presence of God falling in here. People are being healed right now. There's a healing flow right now. Just receive it. It's going to happen. I'm not going to take time to call everybody out on that, but just receive healing and deliverance where you need it. There's a beautiful uh, uh, power of the anointing falling in this place right now. Let's just pray. Let's just pray in the spirit. Come on. Let's, let's take it. Let's take it. Father, we thank you for this, the day of change. I hear the Lord saying it further. It's the day of change. It's the day of breakthrough. It's the day of breaking forth. And the Lord says, I'm not the author of confusion or derision or division. I'm not the one who divides you. I'm the one who puts things together for you. I'm not the one who causes loss. I'm the one who causes advancement, says the Lord. I'm not the one who breaks your heart. I'm the one who fixes your heart and then expects you to walk, get up and walk forward and move forward in great power in me. I'm not the God of doubt. I'm the God of faith. I'm not the God of poverty. I'm the God of prosperity. 
I'm not the God, says the Lord, of uh, lack and doubt and despair and depression and uh, all of these negative emotions and attitudes and states of being, struggling and suffering, as I was saying. But I am the God of the breakthrough. I am the God of the victory. Somebody get excited. I am the God who takes you from there to here and then from here to high, the mountaintop. I'm the God who's going to raise you and answer by fire. And the Lord says again, my son and all of my people listening, the Lord says, I'm going to cause favor to fall upon you. That's coming right from this voice right here that's speaking to you. Thomas Manta the fourth, my servant, as I'm speaking through him this word, blessed are you who hear this prophecy. Blessed are you who hear these words and can take it by faith and say now, because the Lord said, I'm releasing an anointing behind this word to flood your being, to swirl around you, to be on your head, in your heart, on your body, in your house, in your car, in your office, in your family, in your environment, in your atmosphere, to cause a spirit of excellence a spirit of wisdom, the spirit of, <laughs> not of, but the, I mean from God. The spirit of excellence, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of power and boldness and might, counsel and the fear of the Lord. And Father says, we want, we want in heaven, we want people in the earth to understand how serious eternity is. And we want your respect. I've never said that in my life like that. I've never said it like that. Never, never, never. I've been preaching around the world for, I won't tell you for how long, a few, more than a few minutes. Never said it like that. We need your respect. Why? Because that's the real place. That's where all life comes from. That's where all life goes to. You live on the earth for a while, and then you're going to there. And then he's coming back to catch us up in glory to take us up for a while. Then we come back in the second coming. That's why the rapture has to be before the tribulation, because God is not releasing judgment on us or his own people. People think America is going to be destroyed. Who are you to talk that? I'm here. Your pastor's here. Benjamin is here. I'm here. Michael is here. We have others, many, many leaders, many, many righteous people. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah. God said 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Didn't even find 10. The fire fell. Had he found the ten righteous, it wouldn't, maybe he would have not thrown the fire on them. So don't get into this destruction stuff. The day is coming when the end will come. But he's catching us up out of here before that. I say that absolutely from Bible doctrine that's been studied out. And it just makes a lot of sense to me. Because I'm not going to dance with the Antichrist. I'm not having to have to take no mark of the beast so I can go shopping. And remember the warning in the scripture, never take the mark of the beast. If you do, you lose your salvation. That's in the Bible. So even if you were there and had to die, just die that day and cry and say, Lord Jesus, like the people that have been slaughtered out in the, martyred out in the other nations, they want... These other religions, they want them to deny, deny Christ, or they're going to kill them. They say, no, I can never deny my Lord. Go ahead. Whew. Think about the reward they get as a martyr. And they think they're going to save their life. Do you know what those fools would do? They're so full of the devil. They'd probably mock them once they renounce Christ and then kill them anyway. And Jesus said, how can I receive you? You've denied me. Are you seeing the trick? You ever see in the movies where they torture someone to get the name? You know, the mafia movie, you know, the name. What's the name? Who did it? And then that guy has so much pain through the torture, and then he gives the name, and then they shoot him in the head. They're not merciful. The guy didn't save his life by giving it. He should have just kept saying, forget it. But that doesn't even have anything to do with, uh, with, uh, with, with, with the things of God. But that's a real principle. When you're dealing with evil people and the devil, you have to be strict about your principles. One more thing I want to say is redeem the time for the days are evil. You have to redeem the time. 
You have to get busy now. There's not things to always do for later. You got to do things now. Don't wait till later. Say with me, I'm not waiting till later. God is the God of the victory. He's the God of your prosperity. He's the God of your success. He's the God of your brilliance. He wants to give you a brilliant mind. Remember he said in 1 Corinthians 2.16, we have the mind of Christ. And how great the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, by the Spirit. And verse 9 said, eyes not seen, ears not heard. How many know the verse? Nor is it entered into the heart of anyone. The great things that God's prepared. That's how vast they are. But we receive them by his spirit. And then, but so they're possible, they're available. The Lord spoke to me yesterday. I'm reminded, I'm going to tell you this. He said, all things are ready. Everything's there. Anything you want, it's there. Oh, my God. It's painful. Say amen or ouch. <laughs> Everything is there. I want to pray the spirit of acceleration. Get the book. I don't have time to continue. Have you been blessed? All right. Give the Lord a real praise, not a fake one. Thank you so much. That's for you, Lord. That's for you. Completely for you. Lift your hands for a second. I feel an anointing of acceleration coming. I feel... God wants to make people a thousand times more. He wants to take little you and make you like a nation. He wants to take you and make you a thousand times more than you are. With a thousand times more success, a thousand times more favor, a thousand times greater health, a thousand times greater wealth, a thousand times more friends, a thousand times more open doors, a thousand times more blessings in your children, a thousand times more blessings in all the money that you need for things, a thousand times more blessings in, in everything, furniture, clothes, travel, things on this earth that we need to have and take. Everything that God wants you to have, a thousand times more. And I speak to the careers that people are in whether it be business or ministry or, in, or employment, that God will elevate you and promote you and release the anointing for acceleration upon you. That a day, will, a day will be like a thousand days combined in one day. We know a thousand days of labor is not as good as God's favor in one day. We know that and the Lord, one day is like one year, one day is like a thousand years, you know. Thousand years is like a day. So God is into acceleration. At the age that you're at, no matter how young you are, <laughs> or whatever, you don't have time to fool around now. Lift your hands. I prophesy this from the altar of the Father God, that the spirit of acceleration is coming upon you. And the Lord spoke to me also, lift your hands, that the problems and the setbacks that you've been having are being canceled out. And the new season, the new season that he's ordained is being birthed right here today. And right associations, God's going to begin to connect you with the right people. That are going to help propel you to the next day. To the next day. The season of stagnancy is ending. It's over now. Lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. And just get ready for the breakthrough that's coming. The Lord spoke to me. There's, I believe there's 12 people that can do this. I want to, I want to challenge you to sow a $111 seed. $111 in honor of Deuteronomy 111. 111 to in honor of Deuteronomy 111. In honor of Deuteronomy 111. 
The spirit of acceleration is coming. And you can make that happen somehow. I want you to begin to walk to this altar right now. One, two, three, begin to come. There's at least there's 12 of you. I just saw 12 people. I, it's an apostolic number. Step out by faith. Thank you, Lord. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's at least three more. 111. Thank you. Ten, pa Pastor, bless you. Twelve people right now, and there you're 13. That's a, there's a special blessing on you for that. That's not an unlucky number. I like every number. There's some buildings they don't make number floor 13 because they're superstitious, stupid stitious, you know, I call it. So there's the 12th floor, then the 14th floor. They don't like the number 13. 13 is a good number. There's a lot of good things about the number 13. 12, 13, yes, Lord. Lift your hands right now. Father, thank you for the touch of your wisdom. Can we have some ushers stand behind them? I'm not going to, you know, uh, release this like where people are going to fall, but just in case, just in case, just stand behind each person as I'm in front of them. Father, thank you for the favor of God upon her. That's it. The favor of God that's upon her. That's it. The favor of God be released upon her. That's it. Come, my brother. The favor of God that's upon him, Lord. Let it be released. Upon Mama here, the favor of heaven, the favor of the Almighty God. Pastor, the favor of the Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Michael, the favor of God. My brother, the favor of God. My sister, the favor of God. Wow, this is powerful. The favor of God. My sister, the favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God, dear, upon you. The favor of God upon you. The favor of God upon you. In Jesus' name. Something new is happening. In this house, you're expanding. I see more people coming. And I want to prophesy that business people will come here. And they'll learn something meaningful about going further into higher dimensions in their business life. And the Lord says again, I'm reminded again, Pastor, the Lord's giving you favor and open doors with great people. So have your list of questions ready. When you get in the presence of greatness, you're going to have a lot of questions. And as you fire away with questions, you, they're going to speak and give you the answers. Make sure you have one of these little microphone recorder things. Keep it in your pocket. Even if you get one that's all black, people can't know. Just put it on all the time just to be taking the notes. And then someone can type out what was said. It's more powerful because you can't remember everything you hear. That's why we record everything, you know. Lift your hands. A thousand times more. I'm telling you, from today. From today. June 23rd, uh, 2019 begins a new season. I see the angels of the Lord coming. I just saw one come like from that side through the door. Just standing at the doorway here. I'm seeing another one here and another one here and another one here. It's just like heaven has, is visiting this property. And Father, I declare that any kind of problem or harassment over this property is being canceled by heaven. And nobody can trouble you here. And the Lord is going to start to raise the sons. The Lord's going to have you take time, want, wants you, wants you to take time to mentor sons and daughters and begin to pour into them. Be their papa. And don't always be concerned with how much they're giving you. Select the ones that they'll give, but select the ones that you feel can be faithful, that have the respect and they're connected spiritually and pour into them everything you know. Lay your hands on them. Everything you have, everything I have, I'm pouring it unto you. And let them be raised as sons and daughters. God never called us to do the work ourselves. I also, I also declare right now, I'm seeing this administration help. Uh, uh, administration help for greater outreach, greater uh, horizons. And the Lord says, uh, 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 Pastor, your name is going to be known your name is going to be known. God's blowing it in the wind. It's the season of the answering by fire. 
And it's the season of elevation, son. And God says, but promotion comes from me, and I've released it unto thee, says the Lord. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I love you. Can we give the Lord some praise? Pastor. Come on, make it big and better. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah.